My parents recently moved to assisted living and my sister and I were left with dealing with their house. We needed to clear out their house, get it ready for sale, and get everything sorted with many, many years and a bunch of stuff in this house. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process that we use because I'm guessing there's a lot of people out here doing the same thing. And I will show you some of the pieces that I have incorporated from my parents' home into my home. But first, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are one of my regular subscribers, I love you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it more than you know. Please subscribe if you haven't and you like what you're seeing. It's the button right here. I'm trying to grow the channel. We are also on all the social media outlets, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at The Dress Up Mom, hashtag The Dress Up Mom. You can check us out there too. I'm very fortunate that my parents are both still alive and they live fairly close to me, probably about 45 minutes away. And they were living on their own in their home that they had lived in together for many years. Uh, they've been married for 60, no, not quite 60 years, but coming up on 60 years. And my mom is a shopper. I got a little bit of that for me. So she, and she has good taste, but she just has a lot of things. Anyhow, uh, she is in a bit of failing health and my dad was no longer able to really take care of her so we needed to find assisted living for them which meant that we needed to clear out this house and get their house ready for sale and there really was just a ton of stuff. I don't have the before pictures because it actually sort of made me nervous to see it. There was just so much stuff in this house and it was really overwhelming and I'm guessing that there are a lot of you out there doing it. I was talking to people and uh, you know, there's so much stuff out there now with all these older people that are needing to get out of their homes. A lot of millennials don't want the stuff or already have their stuff. I know I had a lot of my own things and so did my sister. So we couldn't really use a lot of the stuff that was in this house. And there were some beautiful, nice things. Our goal was to try to minimize landfill so we didn't want to just throw things away. We wanted to be able to have people that really could use the things, use the things, and obviously sell whatever was worth something. Our first step though was that we got everybody in the family together and we had a nice sort of dinner at the house and we had all of the grandkids and us kids who could be there and whoever couldn't be there we did a FaceTime with them and actually had people pick out what they wanted, the pieces that they wanted. And we did that fairly well. I mean, there was really no squabbling. Most people, you know, wanted different things and we really worked that out nicely. So step number one was that, just going in and making sure that everybody in the family could take whatever they wanted to take. Then my parents had some nice pieces of furniture that were older and my mom has this incredible jewelry collection. She had just so much jewelry. Now my sister and I and my daughter and my niece aren't that into jewelry so we took the pieces that we wanted but there was just a ton of it left over. So my next step was that I called Tanya over from Bad Match. She runs her own vintage and resale shop. So Tanya came over and took the pieces that she thought that she could sell and I was so happy to have that happen because I know they'll go to great homes with Tanya. Then we were still left with tons of stuff. So the next thing is, and I live a ways away and my sister lives quite a ways away. So we had this great neighbor up there that my parents live near and she ended up doing a couple big garage sales for us. And we split the proceeds from the garage sales with her. So that was great. We got rid of a lot of stuff there. We let it go to really cheap and to good homes because again we just wanted the stuff to be used and out of the space. We were able to donate blankets and things like that to animal shelters and then also gave away some things that went down to Mexico and were really helpful there. We were still left with a lot of stuff. Now what we ended up doing next is because the house was really ready for sale and the market was great so we wanted to get this stuff cleared out so we worked with the realtor and she ended up taking the rest of the stuff over to donation and then trashed whatever she could so this whole process took us about mm, 
two months to do to really get everything sorted and taken out there was a piano that my nephew wanted that was my dad's old piano that took a little while to get out but we did a great job i think got it all cleared out and the house sold in like less than a month so i thought i would now show you some of the things that i took and again i was really sparing with what i took because i have so much stuff already and i love the things in my house so i only took things if they were sort of nicer or better than what I currently had or had some really special meaning. So I didn't really take any clothes except for this one sweater, which I thought was nice. It's a vintage, it's a nice like wool vintage sweater. That's my dad's and it fits me pretty well. He, he and I are kind of the same size, so it's a little oversized for me, but I like it because it's basic, it's a nice wool, and it kind of reminds me of him when I'm wearing it, so that's kind of fun. Like I said, my mom has this amazing jewelry collection. She had great taste. So one thing that I inherited were these beautiful Mikimoto pearls that she got when she was in Hong Kong, like back in the 80s. So they're really nice and beautiful. And then she had a lot of great turquoise jewelry. So I have my own sort of bracelets and rings that I wear every day. I don't really change those out, but I do like necklaces. So I'm gonna show you some of these incredible like necklaces that she had. Ugh, they're kind of a mess, but corals and turquoise more like turquoise pieces and these nice things that she got out like in the southwest on various trips love 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 that's all added to my collection and then she had a bunch of really fun beads that i've been incorporated so look at these jade ones and then just like some fun black this has a little bit of like lapis pearls and a little bit of jade in there i think the silver one has like a crystal in it which i really really like and have fun and then this has like some pearls so i've been having a lot of fun sort of layering these necklaces in different ways and again they remind me of her so those were sort of the jewelry and the clothing that we took the rest of the stuff was just stuff for the house, which I will show you now. This is a hand-painted icon by a Serbian artist that they had in their home for many years above their coffee table. Love the colors and sort of the modern look of it. So that is here in our home now, as well as I really like this globe vintage globe light sometimes we didn't have enough light so that is beautiful it has like a wood bottom and then this hand painted egg is also from their home that we brought in this is a beautiful silver bowl that is i think nobu or something like that that they also got on some trips out to santa fe and it's gorgeous and i replaced a kind of yucky basket that i had here with that this is a sculpture of my grandfather that my uncle actually did and my grandfather if you've watched my channel was a somewhat of a serbian hero i'll link a video here that i talk a little bit about that but for me, I just knew him as a loving grandpa, and this is really how he looked. My uncle did an amazing job of capturing his likeness here. So I put him in our curio cabinet that has all of our sort of history and older stuff, and I put him here next to me when I was a lot younger, and my husband's grandma, and some of the antiques from their ranch, but Took a little while getting used to him here. He's kind of pointing like he used to do, but now I look at it that he's sort of watching over us and taking care of us. This hand-painted rooster they got in Santa Fe, New Mexico and used to have by their fireplace. There was a hen, my sister took the hen, I got the rooster and we grew up on a chicken farm, so that was fitting. And also the rooster is Doug's Chinese zodiac sign, I got it for that as well. Love this rooster. This basket is made out of Tory pine needles. It is painted Tory pine needles and it's just 
beautiful. I love the colors of it. And I think it goes really well here with the lamp that we have and the rest of the decor in the house. So I really love that addition. And this is the second Tory Pine needle bowl. I have this actually in my bedroom overlooking the window here and I just love the colors and the feel of it. So this process was really kind of bittersweet. The house had a lot of memories, the things had a lot of memories, but it was also overwhelming. And I think the way that we broke it all down made it so it was manageable. And again, we got it done. So I hope it's helpful. I would love to hear you know, what you've gone through in this area, if you have some good tips for people, because I know it's something that people are dealing with a lot right now. My parents are situated in their place. They're getting kind of used to it. It is weird that we're never going to have the house to go back but it did sell really well and we're really happy with how that all worked out and I've got some key pieces that remind me of them remind me of the house so kind of happy all around I guess it's a good end to this story thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it until next time have fun and dress it up a little